welcome to Emma Ravensmall. Today I'm talking about crafting, but obviously not making cards or knitting. I'm talking about spell crafting. Hello, welcome to Emma Ravensmall. As I mentioned, we're doing crafting, but spell crafting. Now, before I start, this is nothing to do with Wiccan or Wicca. It's, it's not Wiccan. Uh, Wicca is an actual religion, and I wouldn't presume to start stepping on or talk about somebody's religion when I don't know about it very well. So it's certainly not um, Wiccan. Um, but a lot of people, and people have contacted me, talking about spell work, which is or spellcraft, as I would prefer to call it, um, which is absolutely fine, but spells work better if you do them yourself, if you actually um, perform the spell yourself. And there's lots and lots of um, things on the internet, lots of different things you can do on the internet, and um, but they often talk about things, and if you're not familiar with it, you might not, you might not quite understand exactly what it is they're talking about because they might mention some things that people aren't completely um, completely comfortable with. For example, they talk about when you're, you're setting up, a lot of them will talk about cleansing. Now they don't mean that you need to start scrubbing it with bleach or Dettol. What they're actually talking about is using something like a smudge stick, um, these are the most common ways, or something like um, Palo Santo. And what you do if you're going to be cleansing the instruments you're working with is to get your smudge sticks, your Palo Santo or your smudge sticks lit. I'm using two just because it's just the sake of a bit of time. So get them lit and all this smoke that you're getting, all the smudging, all the things that you're using, you can smudge all of the things that you're using to make sure that everything is completely cleansed. Now I will actually be doing um, a spell with this. Um, the spells the people use are quite personal and I, so I'm not going to actually film the spell but what I will do is I will film about the setting up and I will show you how you can set up for spell work. So at the moment I'm just smudging all of these things that I'm using that I haven't yet smudged. I've smudged the room, I've gone into all four corners of the room and I've smudged it. I've also blessed it with Reiki as well because I'm a Reiki master. And so I've blessed it with Reiki as well. So, so I've done that. So it already smells beautiful in here because I like the smell of the Santo. And I'm using some paper and a pen. You need paper and a pen in a, smell, in a spell. And everything that you're going to be using has to be smudged and cleansed. And so you'll hear about cleansing. And that's what they mean when they talk about cleansing. They don't mean scrubbing everything, they mean cleansing it. Um, you'll also hear lots of phrases um, in internet forums and when you're looking at internet things. Um, various things such as uh, witches' baths, because witches, I mean, we've got to start mentioning that a little bit, like witches' baths and things like that. Well, I personally would rather have a shower, so I tend to have showers, I don't have that. They talk about wearing special robes when you're doing magical work. You can use special robes if you want to, that's absolutely fine, you don't have to. Um, you can use them if you want to. Um, some people will talk about sky clad, um, which is no robes at all. But I mean, you know, there we are. But you don't have to do that either. Um, but what it is best to do always is to is to cleanse it because you're getting rid of any negativity and you're getting rid of any um, ill intentions or anything bad that might be lurking around you. You're totally cleaning the area before you start. It's like baking a cake. You wouldn't bake a cake on a dirty surface, would you? And it's exactly the same with this. You don't want to start crafting on a in a dirty area. So you clean it all before you start. Um, also, you will hear about calling in the four elements. Well, I generally do that by using my tarot cards. Um, I haven't prepared this. I should have perhaps prepared it. Um, what I'm actually looking for, you'll find with the tarot that the... Uh, oh, it's all right, I'm trying to concentrate as I'm talking. That the four 
suits of the tarot deck represent the four elements as well. Wands represents fire. And so what I'm going to try and do is find the king and queen of wands. Um, oh, here we are. There's, there's there, the king and queen together. Look at that. And then you'll... Um, so wands represent fire. Then... Ah, here we are. I don't use this deck a lot, so I think it's actually in order. It's a really pretty deck. I'll show you the pictures in, in a minute. Then you've got cups, which represents water. And then, and this is a fairly new deck as well, so that, this is actually working really well. Then you've got swords, which represents air. And then you've got pentacles, or coins, depending on how you like to say it, and they represent earth. So let me show you these cards. These are actually the uh, Radiant ride, Rider Weight deck. Um, because you may have noticed in the cards I use generally for my readings, they're kind of a bit dull. And so these ones are specially designed to be really bright and colourful. So these are designed to be really bright and colourful. I'm using two cameras today. And that and uh, whichever one I choose to use. And then we've got the King and the Queen of Wands, which is, of course, fire. And then we've got the King and Queen of Swords, which is air. And then we've got the King and Queen of Pentacles, or coins, which is earth. So this is what I'm using. Right, I'm using the King and Queen because um, they're the top two aspects of these particular cards. The Queen often means a more, sometimes has a more spiritual meaning or a softer meaning than the King. Nothing to do with gender. It's just it's just the meaning of the cards and the way they were designed. And so we're going to put our cards in the four corners. What we're actually doing is we're sort of honouring the elements here okay so we've got all four elements there and then um, I'm just gonna check to see if I can see anything else I've missed no I haven't missed anything else and so then when you've done that you can also um, cast a circle now you don't have to cast a circle very time very often uh, I'll use something like a bay leaf and I'll like write something on the bay leaf uh, and you can pop it under your pillow or you can use your bay leaf and you can burn the bay leaf afterwards and release the the wish if you like or the affirmation into the air to let the wind take it take it away so I like using bay leaves um, but sometimes if you've got something a bit more important you want to do then you can cast a magic circle and you can get your set up and everything and you can use your table and you can use everything else and you can set set your intentions with using a magic circle. And then you just leave everything until the candles go out. Or I leave everything until the candles go out. I suppose it depends upon where you live. But um, there we are. now can you do it again rock back and forwards you need to do it a bit more so we're going to get the effect are you recording <laughs> this you are so you are so mean <laughs> i'm trying to sort out the light <laughs> hello welcome to emma ravens oh, it was too quick i was always still there the thumbs up you're gonna wrap it's like you go um. Okay, you've gone. You're supposed to be helping. Today I'm talking about crafts. Spellcrafts. Spellcrafts. Who are you? Bond. <laughs> James Bond. Does that not sound right? No. Okay. Today I'm talking about spellcrafts. With.